thank you very much for the invitation and for, for, for being there. So I'm going to tell you about a joint work with uh, Peter Josen about uh, e-functions. But before I, so all new results will be uh, joined with him. But uh, before I get there, uh, I would like to start with a kind, maybe a bit of a long introduction uh, about e-functions, the, their history, uh, some examples, and then uh, the kind of questions we are going to, to answer. Okay, so everything uh, uh, starts with uh, one of the um, most beautiful results in transcendence theory of the 19th century, uh, which is about the values of the exponential function at algebraic numbers. And the final statement is, uh, I'm calling it uh, Hermit Lindemann Weistras, and it says that if you take n <clears throat> algebraic numbers, and you assume that they don't uh, satisfy any uh, non-trivial Q-linear relation. And then you look at their exponentials, exponential of alpha one, exponential of alpha two, exponential of alpha n. Then these uh, complex numbers are algebraically independent. Okay, so there's no non-zero polynomial with uh, rational coefficients in n variables that annihilates uh, these uh, n numbers. And um, well, the particular case where n is equal to one, uh, then uh, being uh, linearly dependent means being non-zero. And then the theorem says that the exponential of alpha, so alpha and non-zero algebraic number is transcendental. <clears throat> and this was first proved by, by Lindemann when alpha is, uh, by sorry, by Hermit, when alpha is rational in um, 1873. So this gives, for example, the transcendence of the number E. And then uh, nine years later, it was proved by Lindemann for all non-zero algebraic numbers. <clears throat> and at the end of the paper, he uh, said that, uh, uh, well, this, this, this statement was true and then sketched uh, the argument. And it was uh, well completed and maybe made uh, rigorous by Bayer Strass in 1885. And um, well, the, the, also the, the the remark is that the well, this is <clears throat> about uh, values of the exponential function, but you also get uh, the transcendence of pi from this because uh, exponential of two pi a is equal to one, and if uh, well, if pi were algebraic, then two pi i would also be algebraic, and one is not a transcendental number. Okay, so this, this, this theorem gives at the same time the transcendence of E and pi, and uh, we can say that it completely solves the question of understanding the, the, well, the properties of the exponentials of algebraic numbers. So, well, soon there was the, the question about how to generalize this theorem to other special functions. And it's uh, not at all uh, clear because... Uh, the proof uh, relies uh, on the property of the exponential that the exponential of alpha plus beta is exponential of alpha times exponential of beta. Yeah. And you can, you can imagine that this is very useful because the theorem is that there are no non-trivial algebraic relations. So using this property, you can uh, reduce the question of a Stein algebraic relation to linear relations, and, and those are easier. And in fact, you can... Uh, rephrase the theorem as saying that if you have different uh, algebraic numbers, then the exponentials are uh, linearly independent, even over Q bar. Um, yeah, so that was the situation for, for a while. And then uh, comes a fantastic paper by uh, Siegel. Um, so the paper is published in uh, 1929, here's the, the beginning. Uh, it is uh, uh, dedicated to Max Den. I actually was <clears throat> it was a time where um, and the mathematicians of Gettingen were already feeling that there was too much uh, pressure uh, to publish. And the uh, publish or Paris was already uh, quite a bad thing for them. So uh, they had this this thing of offering papers to each other uh, and not publishing them. So this paper, I think, was written around uh, 26, and it was sitting in Max Den's uh, office for, for a while. For example, Andre Veil tells in his uh, uh, memories that uh, he, he could read it uh, when he visited Max Den. 
uh, and it was only only published later. So he at the beginning of the paper he says, uh, okay, so this is uh, well, he talks about this theorem by Hermit and Lindemann. Uh, he says that it uh, uses this property of the exponential, and uh, you can already see from the first page. So there's a formula for the Bessel function that is going to come back uh, again soon. Uh, so he's uh, in particular interested in uh, having, well, in understanding the transcendence properties of the values of the Bessel function at uh, algebraic numbers. <clears throat> and one reason is that these numbers are uh, very much related to uh, some physics uh, problems. So one of them is when you study the the, the, the vibration of a of a circular uh, uh, drum. <clears throat> So you hit in the somewhere in the drum, and then you you look at the function that gives uh, the height uh, of the point uh, x y at uh, the time t, and it it is uh, this function is uh, governed by the wave equation. It says that the second um, the partial derivative with respect to time is equal to the sum of the derivatives with respect to x and y up to some physical constant. This is inside the circle, and uh, well, the boundary doesn't move, so there's the boundary condition that u is equal to zero on the boundary. And you can you can try to to look for solutions. Uh, well, you can since it's a it's a circle, you can use polar coordinates and then uh, try to 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 look for solutions in uh, separated variables. So this part depends on the radius, on the angle, and on the time. And uh, just so you plug this in, and the, the first thing you, you see is that the, the time is uh, a sum of uh, cosines and, and sines for uh, certain uh, frequency lambda. And uh, then you see that the, 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 the part, depending on the angle, is also something similar, a sum of uh, cosine and, and sine. Uh, so, so here you have another parameter m. Um, this doesn't appear if you hit uh, the drum in the middle. So the first thing is m equals to zero, but then you have other modes where it really depends on the on the angle. And then finally, you using these uh, two uh, pieces of information, you, you you plug r in, and you you find that it is a solution of the Bessel differential equation. Okay, so <clears throat> it's an equation of degree two, differential equation of degree two, and there's this term where you see uh, lambda and and m. So this, this equation has a unique um, uh, holomorphic uh, solution around zero, which is the, the Bessel function of order m. And it is, um, but you, can, you can look for the, for the power series. And uh, the, <coughs> the differential equation gives you a recurrence relation for the coefficients. And then you, you, you find that the coefficients are like this. So this um, of minus one to the n and divided by m factorial, m plus m factorial. So m is the other again, and then set uh, over two to this power. So this is the power C representation and something that is going to be important uh, later on is that it also has uh, an integral representation. So actually this is the integral of exponential of uh, set over two t minus one over t against this differential form where you see the order again. And if you well, if you use uh, Cauchy's uh, theorem, then you need to co compute the residue, and then there's a two pi i appearing, so you divide by two pi i. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the Bessel function, which is the the holomorphic uh, solution to that equation. And then uh, the, the the conclusion of the of the story is that the radial part is um, this uh, Bessel function evaluated at lambda times r. So lambda was the, the frequency that we got at the beginning. Uh, but then you, you plug in the boundary condition. Uh, so this is r equals to 1. And then this tells you that uh, gm of lambda has to be 0. Okay, So you find that the, the frequency is a, is a 0 of the, of the Bessel function. <clears throat> and this was, this was actually known uh, much, uh, really much earlier than Siegel's paper. And it appears, for example, in a paper by Bourget in uh, 1866, uh, where he um, makes the conjecture 
So you 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 can plot uh, the the first uh, Bessel functions g zero g one g two and so on, and well you see uh, that uh, they they seem to have no zero other than zero. So uh, when when the other is strictly positive here you you get a positive power so you it vanishes at zero, but this this seems to be the the only the only one. <clears throat> so. And I I went to to to, to see a Bourget's paper, and I was surprised to to find that immediately after the paper in the in the volume where it is published, you get the referee report. So, so this is the the ones who presented the paper, and then uh, they they explain like uh, what what he does and why uh, it is good and it should be published, and so on. Okay, so um, uh, that was one of the motivations for, for Siegel, this this question about zeros of the of the Bessel function, and something that it's uh, uh, not too too hard to see. Uh, for example, by integration by parts, or there will be a cohomological interpretation later on, is that there is a recurrence relation between uh, Bessel functions of different orders. So you look at uh, J uh, m plus k. Then you can write it as uh, j of m and j of m minus one, and what appears is, is a polynomial with rational coefficients in one over z, which is a, is a explicit polynomial. It's called a Lommel polynomial in the in the in the literature. <clears throat> and uh, okay, so now let's assume that uh, there is a, a common zero to uh, j m and j m plus k. Okay, so this means that these two terms here vanish. So uh, the other one has to vanish uh, as well. But uh, JM is a, is a solution of a differential equation of order two. Uh, and uh, the derivative of uh, uh, JM is uh, essentially up to sign uh, JM plus one. So if uh, these two vanish at the same time, uh, it means that the, 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 the function of the derivative vanishes. And then you can use the, the equation of other two uh, to, to, to deduce that the function will be identically zero. Okay, so uh, what, is, what is easy to see is that uh, Jm and J minus one does not vanish at the same place. So the conclusion is that this has to vanish at this uh, potential common zero. And then this says that uh, this zero, if, uh, if it exists, is an algebraic number. This, is there a question in the chat? Yeah, there's a question by Christopher Lloyd. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, sorry, the, this, the, they have absolutely nothing to do. It's just a clash of notation that I didn't uh, realize. Um, okay, so... Now let's uh, park this for a while. Uh, we, we will... Go go back to it uh, later. Uh, so that's uh, that's uh, Siegel's uh, motivation and uh, to to try to generalize uh, well, in, as, as 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 he as he can uh, the their meet Lindemann by theorem. He introduces the the notion of an E function. Okay. So what is an E function? Uh, it is uh, uh, by definition a power series with uh, algebraic uh, uh, coefficients. This is the field of algebraic numbers. Uh, it is convenient to write it as a n divided by n factorial set to the n. And no mystery about the name. If you put all a n equals to one, then you find the exponential, and e is for exponential. And uh, besides uh, having algebraic coefficients, you ask uh, for two conditions. Uh, the first one is that it is a solution of a uh, um, linear differential equation with polynomial coefficients. So there exists some differential operator of order n, uh, pn, uh, derivative to the nth power, uh, and so on, such that uh, annihilates the, the, the function. Yeah, you, you want this to be non-zero, non-zero differential operator. And uh, this amounts to saying that uh, actually the coefficients a n over n factorial uh, satisfy some uh, recurrence relation. Okay? They, they satisfy a, a, a recurrence relation with polynomial coefficients. And then if it is true for a n over n factorial, is it also true for a n? 
So for example, even if I here I ask that the coefficients are in Q bar, you immediately get from this recurrence relation that they are in a number field. So coefficients will lie in a number field. And then the, the second condition is the one that uh, allows one to, to do a Diophantan approximation or transcendence uh, theory. And it is that we we want the coefficients uh, okay so we want the coefficients to be bounded by uh, c to the n to so to to grow at most uh, geometrically, uh, but the coefficients are algebraic numbers on on the one hand, and we want to do Diophantine approximation on the on the other hand. So you need to do this in the right way, and the right way that means that you must bound not only a n but also all the Galois conjugates of a n. Okay, so that you want the max of all Galois conjugates of an to be at most c to the n. And then you also want that uh, uh, the common denominator of a0 up to an. So this is the smallest integer such that when you multiply by it, you get an algebraic integer. So you want also this to be bounded by c to the n. And if, if, two, if these two conditions hold, then uh, the power is, is called an e function. Um, it is not going to appear too much, uh, but there is also a. Um, this is the, the previous argument is that a common zero of the Bessel function must be algebraic. Yes, exactly. We so in uh, in in maybe uh, ten minutes we are going to to use the theory of e functions to 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 rule out this possibility. Okay, uh, yeah, I was going to say if, if you delete uh, the n factorial here uh, and you keep the rest of the definition, uh, you get something, and this is called a g function. And the reason is again that if you do a n equal to one, then you get the geometric series. So g is for, for geometric. Uh, and yeah, you can speak, yeah. I, I can speak. Uh, can I speak? Uh, but no. uh, can I ask a stupid question? The so dn is an algebraic integer. So what does that mean? It is at most cn. <laughs> um, uh, no, no, it's, it's 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 just an integer. It's a usual integer. Ah. Oh. So, <clears throat> um, yeah. So it's the for for each for each algebraic number, uh, I can I can pick a, a like integer. Uh, so it's not a minimal. Uh, it's not a minimal way to. Okay, thank you. Um. Okay. Uh. So. Um. Yeah. Le let me give you some examples. So. Well, the exponential function. I. I already gave it to you. And then the the the, the motivating example of the of the Bessel function. So let me just do for simplicity m equals to zero. So then it, this is this is how we defined it using the power series. Um, from here, you maybe don't see it. Uh, well, the, we already have the differential equation. So we need to, to see this, uh, these growth conditions here. Um, and maybe from this way of writing, it's not so clear because you need, uh, you need the, the um, n factorial to match the exponent, OK? So instead, you can write it as uh, set to the 2n you divide by 2n factorial, and then what remains is the binomial coefficient. And then, well, it has it has rational coefficients, so you just need to, to bound the size. Uh, this coefficient, you can, you can see that it is at most uh, 1. Uh, for example, writing 1 plus 1 to the 2n and using the binomial formula. And the, a common denominator will be 4 to the n. Uh, so you can take uh, c equals to four in the in the theorem, <clears throat> and uh, it's not too hard to 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 prove from the from the definition that uh, this this class of functions is stable under sums, products, derivatives, and you can also take the primitive that uh, that vanishes at zero. So, out of one example of, uh, of an e function, you get uh, many of them by 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 doing these operations. Okay, uh, so I, I, I told you that the motivation was to, to generalize this uh, kind of transcendence uh, results. And here is how um, Siegel um, did it. So Siegel did it for the, for the Bessel function and with a, with a technique that in principle uh, could apply to, to, to all E functions, but you 
there was there was some technical condition called normality and uh, at the end of the day it was maybe harder to prove normality than to prove the theorem uh, so Shidlowski uh, in uh, 55 uh, found a, a way to to bypass this normality condition and and then the the, the very precise statement I'm going to give here is is due to uh, Andre and uh, Boykers in so the final statement is due to Boykers in 2006 and uh, relies on the on the structure of the differential equation of e functions that was understood by Andre. So the the statement is the following: you we are going to look at, at um, n e functions, <clears throat> and uh, we assume that the solution of uh, the, the vector f1 to fn is a solution of a linear system. Uh, this this should be a q bar, sorry, and uh, actually everywhere in this slide. Um, so they are solution of a linear system with uh, rational uh, coefficients. So this is this is not really a a, a restriction on the on a given e function because uh, we know that it is a solution of a differential equation. So you can always take its derivatives and uh, and consider the companion metrics of the of the system. And then the 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 theorem is about the special values. So we are going to evaluate uh, these functions at a, an algebraic number alpha. And uh, there are two cases that uh, should be excluded. So first one is alpha equals to zero. Um, well, this is because the, the these are power series with algebraic coefficients. So at zero, they take uh, algebraic number values, and there's just nothing to say about it. And uh, more interesting is you need to exclude the situation where uh, alpha is a pole. So this is a a is a matrix of uh, uh, rational functions. And you don't want these rational functions to have a pole at alpha. Okay. And if uh, if this is the case, the theorem says that uh, every uh, algebraic relation between f1 of alpha up to fn of alpha, so a polynomial with algebraic coefficients that uh, vanishes at these uh, complex numbers, um, actually comes from a from an algebraic relation between the between the functions. So you can lift these to a polynomial Q such that uh, now it uh, it's in one more variable and it vanishes identically on the functions. And we, when you specialize uh, set to alpha, you find the, the polynomial you, you started with. And uh, well, some, something I, I, I didn't say that it's implicit here is that uh, because of this growth condition, uh, actually, this power series has uh, infinite uh, radius of convergence, so you can you can evaluate at any any algebraic number. So the the the, the question about the pole uh, is to to exclude uh, some some examples. So you 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 can do the following thing. For example, you take exponential of z, which is a transcendental function. So uh, according to this, it should take uh, transcendental values. But then you multiply by z minus one, okay, and then you you get a function which is still transcendental, but that uh, vanishes at one now. And and when you write the differential equation, you you will see a z divided by z minus one in the matrix. So 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 this pole uh, explains the the the, the fact that um, you get a zero. And uh, the contribution of Andre is to 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 understand that all possible exceptions come from uh, this kind of poles. Okay, so that's the theorem, and uh, yeah, I <laughs> yes, uh, maybe say it again. So uh, it's it's a really a very powerful result in uh, in transcendence theory, uh, which is uh, completely false if you do the uh, same thing with uh, G functions. So uh, in general, for G functions, you will have many. Uh, algebraic relations that are not at all explained by um, the relations between the functions. Uh, but for for E functions, it's true. And it's, it's, it's powerful because it's much easier to prove that a function is transcendental than uh, to prove that the given value is transcendental. So in the case of the exponential, you can, uh, for example, simply observe that the exponential is periodic. <laughs> and from this, uh, you get, for example, if uh, P of x, y is a polynomial of minimal degree in y, 
that uh, annihilates uh, the exponential, then uh, you evaluate that uh, all integer multiple of two pi i. So you, as a, as a polynomial in 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 y, you will get a polynomial with infinite roots. So it needs to factor, and then you find something of smaller degree than annihilates the exponential. And the 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 their middle in demand theorem we started with is the is the particular case where the functions f i are exponential of alpha i times z. Okay, so in this case, the the matrix A is as a diagonal matrix with alpha one, alpha two in the diagonal, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's easy to see that all relations between the functions come from uh, Q-linear relations between the, between the exponents. Okay. So it's really a generalization. OK, so uh, let's go back to, to Bourget's uh, hypothesis. So uh, in, the, in the case of the Bessel uh, E function and the Bessel differential equation, uh, the only pole is at 0. Uh, yeah, you can maybe see this from the equation. What is it? Here. So you just get a pole at, uh, well, uh, the, the differential equation has a singularity at zero and infinity. So the only thing to exclude is uh, alpha equals to zero. And the theorem says that otherwise, uh, and the, the value of the Bessel function is transcendental. Okay. <clears throat> and in particular, uh, the, we we have now proved uh, uh, the theorem that there are no common uh, zeros uh, other than zero to Bessel functions of different order, because we we saw that if such a zero exists, then it must be algebraic. But uh, the Bessel function has tra takes transcendental values of at algebraic numbers, and but zero is not transcendental. Okay, so. So there are no common zeros, and it was a big uh, success of Siegel. But uh, he he doesn't even say it. So he 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 says, uh, well, we have we have proved this theorem, and then this, and there are no common zeros, and and that's it. And he he moves to 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 the next topic. Okay, and yeah, uh, this story uh, seems uh, not to be very well known because if you uh, type uh, Bourges' hypothesis on Wolfram Alpha, for example, it uh, tells you that it has been proved uh, for uh, differential for Bessel functions of order one, two, three, and four. Okay, so it's maybe time to uh, get updated. Okay, so. Let's uh, let's move uh, to to the to the new uh, results now. Uh, so, in I gave you a few examples of um, E functions, and uh, just after introducing the the notion, Siegel uh, uh, presents the case of uh, hypergeometric functions. So, these are uh, power series. I'm I'm going to write them like this with uh, without the factorial now. Um, so I, I told you that uh, being solution of a differential equations means that uh, the coefficients satisfy a um, recurrence relation with polynomial coefficients. And hypergeometric functions are the case where this is a recurrence of uh, length uh, one. So it means that uh, a n times a polynomial is uh, equal to another polynomial times a n plus one. And in other words, the the as a function of n, the, the quotient of two successive terms is a rational function. And uh, I'm going to take these uh, uh, polynomials with algebraic coefficients. This is for the general definition of hypergeometric function. And then the situation where you get a, an if function is when uh, p and q have rational roots. Okay, so you, you, you might have a, an algebraic leading term, but the, the roots uh, uh, need to be rational, and then the the degree of uh, the polynomial p is strictly smaller than the polynomial q. Okay, and uh, instead of considering just this uh, power series, you evaluate that set powers uh, to the power q minus p. Okay, this is this is similar to to what we did here for the um, for the Bessel function, for example, here. So you see that uh, you have um, well, uh, actually the, the 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 variable appears to the power two n. 
Okay, so so this is the same uh, two and in, in in set to the to the q minus p, and it's important to to get uh, precisely a uh, an e function. Okay. And uh, yeah, so this is maybe the important property that the coefficients uh, are given by a by a rational function. But then you can explicitly write down what you what you get. And Shall I have, yeah? I'm yes. sorry. Yeah. So can you uh, scroll back one page? Yeah, this one. Thank you very much. So the relation in n and plus one is that related to the um, Frobenius isocrystal uh, properties that it's really a Frobenius isocrystal and not a power of Frobenius. I mean, the step is one and not two or three or four. Oh, um... You have the whole Gauss money in here, don't you? Mm -hmm. Not a factor of the Gauss money. No, you, 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 you uh, the yeah, the the differential equation will be of degree uh, uh, of order the degree of Q, but it it usually appears as a as a factor and not the whole thing. Uh, what is the answer? Is that a factor or is that the whole Gauss money? Uh, usually it's a factor. Ah, it's a factor. Yeah. Is that uh, for, ex for example, the, 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 the most classical case is uh, uh, Q will be, well, it's, 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 uh, it, you get a differential equation for the two, but then it appears on a, on a family of curves of uh, higher higher genus. And this is still one. So step n n plus one is still yep, one. Yep, so, yeah. so then it's likely not, not going to be the explanation. Yeah, so maybe I'm... not. Uh, what 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 you do here when you put set to the power q minus p is to to get a slope one, and then your your differential equation is a Fourier transform. So oh. so so maybe maybe this yeah. Well, uh, here I'm I'm doing at the same time the, the this I'm I'm talking mostly about the irregular case. Oh. Uh, but that yeah that will that one will be a Fourier transform of the regular one, and 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 it's yeah uh, probably it's not the explanation, but I I'll have to think about it's, it. So I I apologize for the interruption. No no thank you for the question, Ellen. Uh, <clears throat> yeah okay um, so um, yeah I was saying that you can uh, you can explicitly write down a, a formula. And uh, you get uh, quotients of uh, Pohammer symbols, uh, which is a it's a generalization of the factorial. So you do x times x plus one up to x plus n minus one. So if you if you do the Pohammer of one, you get n factorial. And uh, yeah, there are p rational numbers upstairs, uh, q rational numbers downstairs. You uh, this this should be a uh, not uh, a negative integer. Sorry. Uh, so, because otherwise you get zero in the denominator, and then you you put the variable to to the power q minus p, and then you still have the freedom to multiply by 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 some lambda. Okay. <laughs> so, and Siegel Siegel proves that this is a this is an e function. So the the the, the differential equation uh, follows uh, very easily from this uh, uh, relation. It is it is of degree of order q. Uh, it's not hard to 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 bound uh, the absolute value of the coefficients, so they are rational numbers. And uh, where there is a bit of uh, arithmetic content is in the denominators. <laughs> so essentially, you need to to play with the periodic evaluation of factorials, and uh, and at the end, uh, it relies on some weak form of uh, the prime number theorem. <clears throat> For example, in the in the in the shape that the the less common multiple of one to up to n is at most uh, three to the n, let's say. Okay, so. <clears throat> so he proves that uh, these these are all uh, e functions, and then he <laughs> he asks uh, the questions: Is it true that uh, yeah? So from 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 the operations, uh, sums, derivative products, and so on, you uh, you get uh, many many more. And then he asks the question whether it is true that uh, all e functions can be obtained this way. So as polynomial expressions in, in hypergeometric functions. 
And um, this happens to be uh, true if the equation is for so for the one uh, or two. So this is the case of the two functions we saw, the exponential and the uh, and the Bessel e function. It was proved by Gorelov in two thousand four. And uh, then in two thousand twenty, there was a very beautiful paper by Fischler and Riboal where they proved that. If uh, one assumes the the Grothendieck period conjecture, or maybe a variant of it that I will explain a bit later, uh, then it, it it should be false uh, starting from e functions which are a solution of a differential equation of order three. So there's there's such a such an e function which cannot be written as a polynomial in in hypergeometric functions. And let me maybe uh, uh, say that what is uh, very easy is to prove to construct a, a an e function which is not uh, literally equal to a hypergeometric function or to a multiple of it, because the the property that the the <laughs> the successive equations are a rational function of n this is very special so so you you can you can easily produce one that sati doesn't satisfy this. But then you need to take uh, polynomials, uh, products, sums. You can vary all these parameters here, uh, P, Q, A, B, and, and then uh, you, you lose control of, over this, this rationality. Okay. And uh, yeah, so what uh, this is my collaborator, uh, Peter. And uh, here we are working in, uh, in the island of Tatiu on this question. And uh, we managed to prove uh, in uh, actually during during COVID time that the uh, the the answer to to Siegel's question is uh, is negative. So there are uh, e functions that uh, a solution of a differential equation of order three, the 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 minimal uh, possible, and that uh, are not in the algebra generated by hypergeometric e functions are not are not even algebraic over over this, this algebra. <clears throat> and uh, actually most of them are of this uh, type, but it's, uh, it's, it's, not a, it's not one of these generic situations where it is hard to write down an example. So there's a, there's a machine to produce examples that uh, start with a polynomial of degree four and uh, to just to give you one. So this, this power series where it's, it's a power series set to the N and then the, the coefficient is given by this, which is well uh, still very close to Pohammer symbols and factorials, but you you mix them in a bit of a complicated way. So so this is an e function and is 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 not of the it's not a polynomial expression in hypergeometrics. Okay, so the the way we now I'm going to to change a bit the topic uh, for a while. So the the <laughs> this is the geometry part of the of the title. So the the way we got to this question and we we could solve it is because we were studying uh, for other reasons uh, exponential periods. Um, um, what's the reason for the theorem? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll try to explain the, the, to say a few words about why this is true at the, at the end of the talk. So now I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to explain how we found this function. Okay. So <clears throat> we will, we will have a look at exponential period functions. And then at the end, I will say a word about why it is not hypergeometric. Thank you. Yeah. So we were, we were studying for other reasons, uh, exponential periods. So let me say very quickly what periods are first. Uh, so periods are uh, the complex numbers that you can write down as uh, integrals. Um, well, I need to be more precise about the integrals of what. So you integrate an algebraic uh, differential form with uh, omega, with algebraic coefficients, <clears throat> and you integrate on a subset of uh, c to the n which is uh, defined by which is semi -al algebraic which means it's defined by polynomial inequalities and you also want these polynomials to be with algebraic uh, coefficients okay? <clears throat> so two examples are the number pi uh, when you 
expressed at the 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 area of the of the uh, circle of uh, radius one, or for example, theta of three, uh, the special value of the Riemann theta function. You can, if you develop the 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 geometric series and integrate three times, uh, you find that this is the the, the integral on the unit uh, cube of one over one minus uh, x y z. <laughs> and uh, from a more um, sophisticated point of view, which is the the one which actually allows you to prove uh, anything about these numbers, uh, what we are doing is uh, we are looking at uh, the coefficients of a uh, uh, pairing between um, two uh, vector spaces associated to algebraic varieties. So you consider an algebraic variety x over q. So this will be given by the, the shape of your integral. For example, if you if you are looking at this one, uh, well, it's an integral in three variables. So typically, you will start with a3, the affine space of dimension 3. And then you want a, a, a differential form. So you will remove the the, the locus where it has poles. So your x in this case will be a3 minus uh, the zero locus of, well, the, the locus where x, y, z is equal to one. Yeah, so <laughs> this is your your algebraic variety. Uh, and uh, and then you, you have two vector spaces, uh, q vector spaces in this case associated to it. So one is algebraic, uh, the ramp cohomology, <clears throat> where <clears throat> you, you do like in, in differential geometry, except that your uh, your differential forms have uh, polynomial coefficients, so it's the, the cohomology of the complex of uh, Keller differentials, and uh, you can also uh, so this is purely algebraic, and you can also uh, consider the complex uh, points of your algebraic variety. <laughs> That's will um, form a nice topological space and then consider the singular homology of this uh, of this space. So in this setting is usually called Betty uh, homology. And uh, uh, you will you will have a pairing where you, you take a class of a differential form omega and the class of a form sigma and uh, you integrate uh, omega along sigma. Okay. So if if x is smooth and affine uh, all I'm saying is uh, totally uh, correct, and then uh, by a theorem of Grothendieck, this is a this is a perfect pairing. And if uh, well, in the either non-affine or non-smooth case, you need to be a bit more careful what it means to to take the class of a form and integrate a, and so on. So in 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 such a way, you get a you get a class of complex numbers, and uh, it will essentially be the same. That uh, that we defined before, except some well minor uh, uh, subtleties like, for example, here you are integrating on the unity hypercube, which has a boundary, so it's not exactly a cycle in 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 singular homology. But all this can be solved, and then you get uh, exactly the same class of numbers. And uh, one uh, advantage of this point of view is that you expect to have some kind of Galois theory of periods that uh, will generalize that of uh, algebraic numbers. So in general, these numbers will be transcendental. But you 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 can imagine to to act on uh, such an integral. So so G will be a linear automorphism of Betty homology. And you can imagine to act on the integral by simply acting on the uh, cycle. Okay. <clears throat> and the, the problem of this is that it is a it is a well-defined action on the on the writing as a, as an integral, but of course uh, usually you can write a complex number in many different ways as an integral, and uh, and and this will depend on the on the way of writing. So the Grothendieck period conjecture that I that I mentioned in in one of its uh, incarnations tells you what are all the possible ways of writing the same period uh, as in as different integral representations. So how to pass from one to another, and uh, and this is this is very totally out of reach, but. Uh, it's amusing that we can use this conjecture to actually define uh, this uh, this um, Galois group 
and to get a, an action which is well defined at least on on symbols. Okay. Okay, so that's the very short uh, summary about periods. <clears throat> and um, many, many numbers we like are periods, but uh, some other numbers that we also like very much are not expected to be periods. So one of them is uh, E uh, that we already had. And uh, another one is uh, Euler's uh, gamma constant, which is usually defined like this as the limit of uh, differences between the partial sums of the harmonic series and, and log. And we, well, there are good reasons to think that they are not periods in the in the previous uh, sense, but they 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 are both uh, exponential periods. So exponential periods is a is a generalization of that uh, of that uh, notion. Um, where uh, you integrate omega uh, along sigmas before, but uh, you are also allowed to put the exponential of uh, an algebraic uh, function. So the new ingredient is that uh, there's an algebraic function f. Omega is still a, an algebraic differential form. And uh, sigma is uh, what is called a rapid decay cycle, which is something that... Uh, okay. The main property is that it makes the integral convergent. So typically, you if uh, sigma has a boundary, you want the, the real part of f to be very positive along this boundary, because then exponential of minus f decays uh, rapidly, uh, which means it decays faster than omega, which is a, a, a polynomial differential form. And then the integral converges. A typical example of this is the square root of pi, which is uh, not expected to be a period either, but that you can write as exponential integral of well, the Gaussian integral, so integral of exponential minus x squared on the on the real line, which is a it is a rapid decay cycle for this for this function. Okay. And in the in the in the same way as 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 before, uh, it's possible to think of exponential periods as a the coefficients of a of a pairing. Where, where now you have uh, the RAM homology, which is associated to uh, the variety, but also to a function, uh, and uh, a homology group, which is this uh, rapid decay homology. <coughs> and and this uh, the, the pairing is given, so classes here are non-compact cycles. So you write them as limits of uh, sigma t's. Um, there should be a t here. Uh, but they only go to infinity in the directions where the real part of f is uh, very positive. Yep. And, and there's a question. Uh, yes, the, the the notion of rapid decay cycle depends on the on the function. So actually, what uh, what we define is um, what we define is this space. So given the variety and the function, uh, this will be uh, this will be unbounded cycles on the complex points of the of the variety. And the, the directions where they go to infinity depend on the function. Thank you. <laughs> and yeah, so and again, uh, this is a perfect pairing. So this uh, this is the uh, well, it was first uh, proof by Deligne for a polynomial on A1, and then uh, Bloch and Eno for for curves in a marginal setting. And uh, in general, it's a, it's a theorem of in and Rook et al. So this is exponential periods. And now uh, I try to go back to, to E functions. And uh, one nice thing about uh, exponential periods that you don't have for usual periods is that it's very easy to, uh, to deform them. What I mean by deform is that starting from exponential of minus f times omega along sigma, you can introduce a variable z and uh, simply consider exponential of minus z f. But this, of course, the the case where f is equal to zero, and then you are back uh, to the to the wall of uh, classical periods, and we are just writing down the constant function given by a period. But in general, uh, f is non-zero, and then you will get a a function. And since the the important property that defines the rapid decay cycle is the real part of f, if you take a set to be uh, to have positive real part, then uh, the the integral still converges, and then you will get a, a holomorphic function on this on this half space. And um, these functions are not um, uh, E functions. 
uh, for two reasons. Uh, the first one is that uh, uh, even uh, if you you assume they are holomorphic, uh, it extends to uh, to an entire function. Then in general they do not have algebraic coefficients, and we already see this in the in the example where. Um, you take as a variety the uh, complex plane minus zero. The function is uh, x minus one over x. You can integrate on the on the unit circle. Uh, so so this is an exponential period function. But uh, when you when you compute using Cauchy's residue theorem, there's the two pi i missing. So so the, so this is almost the the Bessel function, but uh, not quite. It's two pi i times the Bessel function. Okay. <laughs> which makes sense because if you this is a situation where you can evaluate the function at set equals to zero and then you get the integral of dx over x on the circle and this is exactly two pi i. So this is one problem that arises when uh, uh, the function is um, uh, entire, but in general is 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 not even an entire function and then the way mono monodromy around zero. And uh, what we uh, prove with uh, Peter, so, uh, well, the theorem is proof, uh, the in progress refers to the writing, uh, is that uh, uh, these, uh, um, these kind of functions uh, on the uh, half plane uh, real part of it said positive, they are actually uh, uh, linear combinations of E functions with monodromy. And uh, the monodromy is as easy as possible. So it's quasi-unipotent monodromy. It means you have uh, rational powers of Z and uh, integer powers of, uh, of the, the logarithm. Okay. And then uh, E functions. Okay. So in other words, um, well, this, this comes from the fact that the differential equation that is going to uh, solve the, well, the, this function solves a differential equation, and and that one will will be uh, have a regular singularity around zero, and the monodromy uh, is uh, quasi unipotent, so you get linear combination of these kind of things, and uh, this this settles the question of monodromy, and uh, linear combinations where so they are linear combinations with coefficients in uh, uh, so the coefficients can be algebraic numbers. But we also saw that you need periods because this, well, this is the case where f is equal to zero and then you get a function constant uh, equal to a period. And then uh, the other thing you get is uh, uh, the gamma um, the gamma constant. And this one appears when you when you have uh, logarithms. So it corresponds to the to the Jordan blocks of the of the monotromy. And you also get uh, values of the gamma function at rational numbers. And these rational numbers have denominators, the, the, the denominators of the rational exponents. They, they come from the finite part of the monodromy. Okay. So this is a general property. And uh, the it, it really it really gives a, a source of uh, new E functions that uh, that it would be uh, hard to 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 come on with to come up with. Uh, so, for example, you can you can consider the same integral as before, but instead of integrating on the unit circle, so this is a case where the homology has dimension two. So one uh, cycle is the unit circle, but there is another cycle, which is the is is actually the positive real line, except that you need to go a bit around zero to to avoid the singularity. And if you do this, you apply the, the theorem to, to this situation. So you find uh, uh, an E function, which is the Bessel function we had. It comes with some logarithm and some uh, gamma constant. And then you find another power series, which is in this case is this one. So Hn is the harmonic number, one plus one over two uh, up to one over n. And uh, this, is a, this is a new E function that is well, it's not um, it's not obvious to 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 to, to figure out and uh, to prove that this is an E function. You will arrive in this particular case, but it's it's solution of a differential equation of order four. You need to bound the the denominators and so on. 
So this is this is the 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 geometric source of e functions, and um, the easiest uh, the easiest uh, geometric situation that you can consider is uh, your variety is the affine line. An algebraic function on the affine line is is a polynomial. Uh, so we take a polynomial. I'm going to take it monic, so so that uh, the the real part is just governed by the leading term, and. Uh, we consider this kind of uh, integrals <clears throat> and uh, this integral is going to 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 satisfy a differential equation of further the degree of the polynomial minus one right because you, you for example you can compute the dimension of cohomology and if you you differentiate uh, under the integral sign and then you get uh, uh, different classes in cohomology and after uh, doing the, the degree of the polynomial, you, you, you have a linear relation. So uh, if we want something of order three, I'm going to take a polynomial of degree four. Then this will give a differential equation of order um, three. And in this case, there's only a finite uh, monodromy. So, so you get a linear combination of uh, powers of set with the denominator four E functions. And in this case, the coefficients are just uh, values of the gamma function at one over four and two over four and so on. <clears throat> and uh, so this produces E functions. And what we had uh, observed with uh, Peter before is that uh, the only situations where you get uh, um, um, polynomial expressions in hypergeometric functions are very uh, symmetric. So uh, the, 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 the polynomial F has a symmetry property, which is in general uh, not true, and is the following. So you consider the critical values of F. So this is F computed at the zeros of the derivative. So there are three uh, zeros. You compute F, you get three complex numbers. Um, and if uh, they are not on the same line or if the triangle they form is not equilateral, then uh, these E functions that appear here are not going to be uh, polynomial expressions in, in hypergeometric functions. So then if you want to, if you want to write down a, an example, you just need to, to take the easiest polynomial that satisfies this. So we took x to the four minus x two plus x, and uh, you compute the, the integral, and then this gives exactly uh, the function I was I was showing to you when you when you expand the exponential inside the integral. Okay, and that's probably a good moment to, to stop. Thank you. <laughs>